Hey guys, and welcome back to Lightning's Perspective. It is your host, Lightning K, and today I am back with another podcast. So today's episode is going to be some questions that people don't think to ask. But before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you guys for subscribing. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe because you're going to want to. You're going to want to hear what I have to say. Also, y'all, I'm sorry for not uploading on Wednesday. I was busy. I am a student athlete, so I do go to school and I have homework to do. And I'm an athlete. By the way, guys, make sure you guys are looking at my community tab because I do like put uh, if i'm uploading or not but just like updates on there and stuff so look on my community tab and i did ask you guys if you guys wanted to see questions people don't think to ask or how to be like the prize that you are but that video is not ready i don't have my notes for that ready and stuff so i'm gonna have to do this first these questions are more like i was like looking at google what kind of questions are like a-list celebrities b-list celebrities what kind of questions do they get asked and i want to answer these questions because as you guys know i am i'm a manifestful person is that a word i don't know but i'm always like speaking things as if it's i'm already that I'm a fit person. I go to the gym every day. Those kind of things. Like I speak things into existence. And I feel like a lot of things that I want and a lot of things that I speak to become true comes true. So get into manifestation. Do your homework on manifestation if you not have yet. So coming in with number one is what is your biggest day-to-day challenge? And realizing that people don't deserve your anger. I feel like those are one of the two biggest day-to-day challenges because you'll get mad at something that one friend did and then you have like a thousand other friends, but you're trying not to let your anger out on them. And I'm working on that. I know that I have not anger issues, but I would say like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to control my feelings in a way where I'm not hurting other people because of my feelings. But I will learn how to. The next one is, what's the difference between a confident and a cocky individual or person or whatever you want to call it? So I think a, let's start off with confident. We'll go from positive then to negative. Confident person is somebody who knows they look good, but doesn't go around trying to deteriorate other people because of how good they look. A confident person always tries to uplift people and that's what makes them feel good. Uplifting people. A confident person doesn't speak down on others when they don't feel the most confident. They help others to feel more confident. A confident person goes around helping people as much as they can to be confident themselves. Now, a cocky person is going to do everything in their power to make everybody seem like such a little ant so that they can feel like the big giant. A cocky person is going to make sure that everyone knows they look good and no one looks as good as them. A cocky person will not shut up about how good they look. Now, uh, the difference between a confident and a cocky person is a confident person might say they look good, but they're not only talking about themselves. They're going to be like, you know what? I look good. And then their friend comes in and be like, girl, you look good. Like, you know, they're not only complimenting themselves. Like, that's kind of cocky. Don't only. It's okay because I be complimenting myself. Everyone compliments themselves. But the difference is I'm not in people's faces saying I look good. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm not trying to prove to other people. That's the difference. A cocky person is trying to prove to other people that they look good while a confident person is telling themselves that they look good. So there's the difference. Next one is how often do you set goals for yourself? So I was on TikTok. I know probably some of you guys heard about this, but there was like this rich people theory that rich people are rich because of how they think of the years and how they set goals, which is basically if you go to school, And actually, this is very smart because this is how they run school. But basically, you separate the year in four different quarters, each quarter consisting of three months. So three times four is 12 consisting of the whole year. But that is like the same concept that school uses, except I don't know like how much is in each quarter. So in the first quarter, it's three months. So you'll set three goals. This is how I do it. Everybody kind of mixes up their own way. But this is I did like my own little remix. So in each quarter I set three goals because there's three months in each quarter so I'll set three goals and then I accomplish those three goals and then quarter two another three so on and so forth and I find that that helps me a lot like through big goals like reaching a thousand on on YouTube working out every day drinking water every day like three big goals that it's going to take some time to accumulate and then I have each month I set like still a big goal but it's not as big as my quarterly goals And for this month, I had a specific goal to reach 100 subscribers. And I really hope I reach my goal. At the time I'm recording this video, I have 92 subscribers. So y'all get me to 100. Y'all, I'm trying to bring this candy tomorrow so that I can give it out. Because I have it, I bought it, so let's go. But yeah, and then like every person on New Year's Day, they set their 1,001 goals. and But that's how I separate it, though. I do. I set my big goals on New Year's Eve. It's like a little 
routine that I do and I really like it. It's kind of like New Year's is its own holiday because people kind of they don't, they don't really treat New Year's as a holiday. Me, I clean everything. It's like a restart, refresh, set goals. I'm a new person. And people are always like, New Year, new me. But I see why people don't like when people say that because you kind of have to live up to that standard. But I wouldn't say New Year, new me. I'm going to say New Year, better me. I feel like that's a better way to put it in. And next year, I'm going to start saying that instead of saying New Year, new me because it's not a new me. It's the same me, but it's going to be a better me by the end of the year. The next one is says, where do you find your purpose in life? Honestly, like there's a lot of kids that don't know their purpose in life. And honestly, as a kid, as a 14 year old, 15 year old, 13 year old, 12 year old, however old you are, you don't have to know your purpose at this age. But if you do, it's going to be so amazing because by the time you even become 16, 17, 20, 30, you're going to be so much further in life than a 50 year old person might be because you knew what you wanted to be and what your goals and what your purpose was at such a young age. So with that being said, find your purpose now. So this is where I found my purpose in life. And this is how. So I found my purpose in life through basketball, honestly. And I'm not trying to be that person that's like, oh my God, my sport is really like my therapy, but it truly is like not to be that person, but to be that person at the same time. Like it really is like without basketball, I literally train like, six days a week and the other days i'm practice i'm practicing because training and practicing is different i train like three days a week i practice the other three days a week and in between i have games i'm literally playing basketball 24 7 and then now that i have my podcast is like another thing that i'm finding purpose in life because i'm finding the purpose to help people to become better a better version of themselves i'm teaching them how to move on move better i'm teaching them how to really maximize their personalities and how to maximize their purpose in life and so i feel like i'm really helping people to move on to the next step and I, that's my goal honestly with this podcast to gain more people to want to better themselves so yeah that is how i found my purpose in life honestly and even though i'm 14 years old and i feel like sometimes i feel like i have it all figured out i know i don't and i know that there's much more to come as i get older and i know that i'm gonna have a deeper me i know i have a deeper purpose and a deeper meaning in life but i just haven't found it yet i'm fully aware of that but as for now this is my purpose in life and you know there it this might be my forever purpose this might not be things might change things might not because you never know what the future has to hold for you but as for now podcasting basketball that is it that is my purpose in life which leads us to our next question which is do you believe people have a higher calling in life now i am starting to begin i am beginning my religious journey with god if you don't already know if you don't already know go watch my video so with that being said you guys um i believe that god has brought everybody on this earth to do something the same way that i believe that he brought me on this earth to do something because god makes the homeless to teach the rich how to take care of the money and God makes the rich to give the poor something to look up to, something like, oh my gosh, I want to be like that one day. So I feel like everybody has a purpose in life. That was just like the, sim is it symbolic? I don't know. But like, that was just like the basic meaning of, I feel like the overall um, purpose of people being on earth and how, why there's rich and why there's poor. That's just like the, I, the most simple words I could have put it in, like to kind of explain it to like a fifth grader. That was the best way I could have put it. But like in a deeper meaning, I feel like everybody has a, a higher calling in life. Some people are called to do podcasts to help other people because I love watching podcasts. And so I just believe that everybody has a purpose in life and that they just need to find it. Nobody is here for no reason. Nobody is here by accident. Nobody is here just to be here. So with that being said, if you haven't found your purpose, I think I want to make a video, honestly, on how to find your purpose in life, find your higher calling, find your true calling and find what you're really here to do because everybody some people are here to be an example for others some people are here to help others some people are here to do what they want to do but little do they know they're being an example like the rich they're not rich to show the poor something to look up to they're not rich because of that but they don't know that they're that's their purpose same thing with the homeless if you think of life in a deeper meaning there's a reason behind everything you're like oh my gosh why am i home why am I homeless? Like I tried so much in school, but I just could never pass. That's why God brought you here to teach the rich how to take care of their money because this could be them. Maybe you were rich. Maybe you went bankrupt and they just want to teach like everyone is here for a reason. And I'm going to do a video on that. So I'm going to get deeper into that. The next one is what have you been most proud of learning lately? I think honestly, what I've been most proud of learning lately is how to like, how to control my feelings and how to really 
handle certain situations and how to not react so fast. That's something I'm really like happy that I'm learning. And I, again, I'm learning. So obviously I'm not, I haven't mastered it because I'm still learning it, but I'm happy that I'm learning that because I know that that's a big issue. I tend to just react, react without thinking. And it, it leads to me not liking the situations I'm in. It ends up to being like me regretting what I did. The next one is who do you consider as family? And now this is honestly a very controversial topic because everyone always says family is everything. But what they mean by that is not your literal blood family. When I think of family, I think of people who support me. I think of people who are never too scared to call out my name on the bleachers. Rather, I can't dribble a ball or I'm so good at dribbling that the person is crossing eight feet and, you know, I just pass them. And honestly, like, not to toot my mom's horn, but toot toot because, guys, she was on the them bleachers when I was literally traveling to Asia on the court. And she was still saying, go, Kaylee, go, Kaylee, on the bleachers. He's still yelling my name out there on the bleachers. So that's what I mean by family. Somebody who's going to support you, no matter if you just started or you're a master at it. No matter if you barely know anything about what you're doing or if you know everything about what you're doing. Like, family is somebody who's going to support you through the literal thick and thin, through the crying, through the happiness, through the depression, through the joyful, through everything. That is what family is. The next question is, what role does music play in culture? And I feel like music has a big part of literally anything, how you feel, how you act, how you think, how you are, the person that you are. So especially with culture, music plays a big part. I feel like music is what basically builds up the culture i feel like through the music you can learn a lot from the culture the next question is does language affect how we see the world i think that everything affects how we see the world people are people and it is just a people instinct a person's instinct to see the world in a different aspect after every tiny little change so especially language yeah that is definitely um because if everyone spoke the same language, I feel like the world would be a lot different. And if everyone spoke a different language, the world would be a lot different. So that is something that you're going to have to do your own research on. Um, you know, again, I'm a 14 year old girl. I do not have all the answers, but that is all I can say because that's all I know about that. The next one is, are people defined by the culture that they grow up in? And I feel like that's a yes and no, because people are only defined with what they let define them. So if you let your culture or the experience or the way that you grew up affect how you act as an adult then yes or as even a teenager a growing young adult like yes that can affect you and it can define you but if you're like you know what I know I grew up in a terrible house but I don't want that to be me I don't want that to be I don't want people to see that when they see me so you can let it define you or you cannot let it define you I'm gonna say yes it can define you but if you don't let it define you, it won't. And just don't let it define you. Even if it was a good situation, some people don't want being rich to define them. So, I mean, it's up to you. The next one is, are people better at creating or destroying things? This is actually a question to think about because people are good like me. I'm really good with communication at the beginning. But once it's time for me to open up and tell you about my feelings, it's like, I can't because I feel like I'm going to destroy things and I don't want to be a, not a home wrecker because it's my home that I'm going to have to wreck. But um, I don't know. I feel like people are really good at breaking hearts, but they're not good at. I don't know. This is a very this is a very again. I'm a 14 year old girl that doesn't have the answers, but I'm actually going to try my best to answer this question. So honestly, I think people are better at creating things because people are really good at in the beginning people are always really good in the beginning but they can never properly break it off which is a which is why again i feel like people are better at destroying things because most honestly i'm gonna be real most teenager relationships they start with you know communicating at the beginning and going strong but then they both don't feel it and they just don't talk and it's just like they drift away there's not a proper breakup there's not a proper sayonara it's kind of just no talking so but that's not really destroying things because you didn't properly end it but it is because you didn't properly end it so honestly it's a it's both honestly so we're gonna end it off with the last three which is if you could describe humans in three words which words would you use i would use disrespectful people are really disrespectful and that's something that as a humans we need to work on people can be really nice though and people do not know how to control their feelings and anger those are i know those are not three words but those are like three ways i would describe human nature second to last one is which one is more important the human body or the human mind and 
Argue if you want to, because I want to argue. It is the human mind. And why do I feel like it's the human mind? Everybody has their own opinion, so let's be respectful here. But I feel like it is the human mind because no matter what you feel like, there there's people in comas all the time, but their mind is still going and they're like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I'm not ready. And they're praying to God and they're literally like, it's a mind. Life is a mind game. The What you put in it with your mind and with God and with your power with God is what is going to come out. So literally, it's um, everything is mental. Basketball is mental mental football's mental sports are mental life is mental everything is mental so that's what i had to say about that and the last one to end off the podcast is why do people why do good people do bad things and i feel like under the right circumstance any good person could do the wrong thing so comment down below you know if you have any like controversies not really controversies but like if you disagree if you agree more things to add some things to take away let me know how you guys are feeling like really get get into an essay down there y'all and i could make a part two like responding to the comments y'all i would do that like i feel like that would be a dope video like i could do like a video responding to the comments and be like okay this is what this and this person said this is what i think if you guys have any ideas or any advice to give comment down below y'all y'all could dm me on instagram my instagram is going to be in the description box down below so give me any video ideas or if you know me personally at school whatever it is tell me like some video ideas that you have and i will give it to you guys but without any further ado make sure you guys subscribe like share this video with your friends and i will see you guys in the next video bye